this year we're going to look at an institution that's been as old as, it's as old as Chandler's. It was here since the earliest days, uh, the Chandler Public School System. And our keynote speaker, as the mayor mentioned, is Dr. Castile. Uh, Dr. Castile was born and raised in Phoenix. She attended elementary school in the Creighton School District and attended North Phoenix High School in Phoenix. Uh, she is the superintendent of the Chandler Unified School District, where she manages the day-to-day -day operations and the growth and development of what truly is a hyper-growth district. Dr. Castile received her BA and her MA in elementary education, as well as her administrative certi certification from Arizona State University. She received her doctorate of education from NSU at Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and she has been with the Chandler Unified School District for many years. Join me in welcoming to the, to the stage Dr. Camille Castile. Thank you so much. But thank you, what fun to be here and, and be able to provide the retrospective on the Chandler I've known and loved for many years. While I was born and raised in Phoenix, I have spent the past 46 years in Chandler. You know when you get invited to do this kind of look back over the years speech that you're edging up in the generational lineup. So thank you, Martin, for making me feel so old and inviting me to give a historical perspective um, on Chandler schools. Nearly every time I give a speech, it seems important to me to reflect on the way I was raised by my parents and credit my grandparents who were immigrants from Baskinta, Lebanon. My grandparents became proud Americans immersed in the culture of this country and chose Arizona as their home, raising my parents according to their principles as well as the values they lived by. They started, that started me thinking about the generation of people who have populated my world, which has been centered mainly in Chandler. I would venture to say it's probably an important component of any historical endeavor to look back and understand what happened and why, and to understand the people who shaped those events and the values they shared. I'm sure many of you may have your own impressions of the generations, the way things were and how you were affected so we've provided some paper and pencil at your table in case you want to jot down a few notes after going on this little venture with me. To help us stroll through the years, I'd like to introduce Terry Locke, my Director of Community Relations. Many, many of you know him. He's been with me for the past 20 years. I think you'll know why I say I think Terry's going to be totally exhausted because he's traveled through generations on this particular presentation. So let's begin the journey long before Camille Castile joined the Chandler School District, before there was a Chandler School District to the oldest living generation in America, the GI generation, or to some, the greatest generation. It emerged during the time period of 1901 to 1926. Those years produced my parents and very likely many of yours. They lived through the Depression. They valued hard work, family loyalty, and the importance of personal civic duty. And if you can see Terry, he's in there. They saved our modern world in World War II. They maintained a strong loyalty to jobs, groups, and schools. They grew up without many conveniences. They avoided debt, and they saw the birth of the radio, air flight, and television. In 1912, the Chandler School District was merely in its infancy, and the city of Chandler was little more than an alfalfa patch, as the mayor said. Even so, the small community saw the need to educate their children, and so the Chandler Grammar School opened its doors to 67 children in 1912. By 1920, the burgeoning little town grew to a population of about 6,000. More than 500 students attended Chandler schools, which now included Goodyear and Tyler Elementary. The iconic Chandler High School building was completed 
1922 and our current principal sitting here and remained the only high school in the town for 76 years. Later that decade, the community requested the district open a school, so the Wynn School was opened. And that came into being at about 1929. Continuing on our journey, we go to the next generation referred to as the mature silent generation. They were be born between 1927 and 1945. They went through their formative years during a time of great conformity, but also the, a post-war happiness. Women still stayed at home for the most part, But if they worked, it was usually as a teacher or a nurse. This generation is generally disciplined, self-sacrificing, and cautious. They knew what it was like to go to the store and buy a butterick or simplicity pattern and fabric to sew a dress or a pair of jeans, pair of pants. They would make phone calls on a party line. And had to crank up the window in a car. Some of them had to get out and crank a car to get it started. They also knew what it was like to pull up to a pump at a gas station and leave with a full tank of gas, your oil checked, your windshield cleaned, and they never had to get out of the car. If you wanted to buy something special, there was always that Sears Roebuck catalog you just filled out the form, sent in the order, mailed it in, and you waited and waited and waited. My personal favorite, because my mom was a collector of these, do you remember those green stamps? During the last decade of the mature silent generation, the 1940s, there were some big changes in Chandler. 1941 saw the construction of Williams Field later called Williams Air Force Base. Scores of airmen and construction personnel sought living quarters in Chandler where housing had been inadequate for years. Consequently, by 1942, Chandler Housing Corporation planned and constructed 62 homes in the north part of the community. This development represented the big beginning of modern Chandler. The community grew rapidly and by the end of the war, there were 1,011 children in attendance in Chandler schools. In 1949, Chandler Heights School opened to 20 students in converted army barracks. This school was much appreciated by the families living south and east because young students would no longer have to take that long bus ride into town to attend school. So now we come to the baby boomer generation, generation, those who were born between 1946 and 1964, and I need to lay claim to this is my generation. We were raised on television, and not necessarily because of that, we were more self-centered than generations before us. Though most of our mothers stayed at home, women of this generation began working outside the home in record numbers. Baby boomers were and are generally described as optimistic, driven, and team-oriented. Now, we baby boomers may have been raised on television, but we still had to get up and change the channel. And we still had to use our fingers on those rotary dial telephones. A good number of us remember the days our parents drove with us in the car using their arm as the seatbelt to keep us from smashing into the windshield during a sudden stop. And we know what this is for. How many of you remember getting your first clothes dryer? So let's move on to Generation X. These are the children born between 1965 and 1980. The Generation X children became the first generation of latchkey children because their mothers were joining the workforce in droves. They grew up street smart, but sometimes isolated. 
their parents were career driven and divorce was becoming more prevalent. The Generation X children may be cynical of many institutions. Often they are described as skeptical, cautious, and un unimpressed with authority. But they're very self-reliant. And by this time, the baby boomer, Camille Romley, had graduated from North Phoenix High School in Arizona, graduated from Arizona State University, and married a handsome man named Tom Castile. And I joined the Chandler Unified School District as a first grade teacher the very same year at Erie Elementary in 1971. By 1971, the city of Chandler's population had grown to more than 13,700, though it retained its small town personality. Cotton, sheep, and cattle farms were in abundance. Engagements, I know some of you will remember, engagements and marriages were still announced on the woman's page of the local paper, the Chandler Arizonan. The Chandler Unified School District grew to nearly 5,000 students with four elementaries, one junior high, and one high school. And it's nice to say Kenneth Knox was the superintendent and he served in that role during this period for nine years. When I think back to the early days of my career, it is just amazing how much has changed. In 1971, almost all of the students walked to school because nearly everyone went to the school in their neighborhood. And students, I can still remember those students leaving their metal, well I did it, leaving your metal lunchbox by the classroom door and never worried about refrigerating it. In those days, the district built a school in every square mile. However, over time, the concept of a walk-in neighborhood school became unrealistic and unaffordable. Now our schools are built to serve several miles, square miles. So now our transportation department has expanded to 184 daily routes, 250 plus buses, 267 drivers, and we transport over 10,000 children a day. When we wanted to communicate with each other in the 70s, we picked up a telephone or we wrote a letter or a memorandum. We wrote checks to pay our bills and sometimes, lo and behold, we even paid in cash. There were no telephones in the classroom, so if a teacher wanted to make a telephone call, he or she would have to wait for a break, 15 minute recess, hope that the phone in the office or the workroom was available, more importantly, hope that she didn't need to use the bathroom. Of course, you couldn't use the phone and the bathroom. You didn't have enough time when there's only one phone in the school. Now, of course, our teachers have a phone in every classroom and a computer at their fingertips, allowing them to send a quick email or memorandum to a parent or colleague whenever needed. Whenever teachers wanted their students to complete a worksheet, they would use the notorious purple monster, the ditto machine. And they would crank it by hand to get the number of copies. Our secretaries, and I know many of you will identify with, typed their reports on typewriters, of course. If you wanted a copy, you would insert a slip of the carbon paper, hoping you wouldn't make a mistake. And I know you remember the fun of using whiteout. Compare that to today. Now the copy machines are busy duplicating hundreds and hundreds of pages. But just as often, the assignments are completed online, submitted by way of email, transported back and forth on a flash drive. Now I know you will remember, some of you will, remember the record player from the film strip projectors. Elementary students could not wait for their turn to be the one to advance that film strip projector. And if the teacher really wanted to go all out, he or she would order a 16 millimeter film from the Arizona Film Cooperative. And if you could figure out how to get it all strung up and the film didn't break midway, you were good to go. During these generations, Generation X, our administrators and secretaries use those snazzy Rolodex files right on the top of their desk. 
And if you needed to call a parent or a student, you could locate the yellow card or the emergency card, which had the family's work number and their home number. Now, in today's world, the phone numbers of the parents, the grandparents, dad's first wife, mom's second husband, and the family pet <laughs> are, it's kind of true, but not the pet part, are all available in our electronic student management system where it's shared district-wide at a touch of a finger. You can just about find anybody and you want. Alerts and messages can be sent out district-wide to 45,000 families for emergency situations with the push of a button. Need to add a column of numbers in the 70s and 80s? Bring out the adding machine with the long white tape. Morning attendance was kept on a ledger sheet, tallied up by the teacher, and students loved to be the one to walk that attendance folder up to the office. Okay, now remember when a teacher wanted to smoke? Off to the teacher's lounge she'd go in those days. And of course now, if a staff member wants to have a smoke, they have to go off campus across the street and not visible to anybody, especially students or the public. By 1976, the Chandler District had added two new schools, Knox and Willis Junior High, and also that year, Ted Perry became the superintendent and remained so for 15 years. So the years flew by and Generation Y presented itself. This generation, also known as the Millennium Generation, was born between 1981 and 2000. And during that era, Howard Conley became the superintendent and remained in that position for five years. And I have been blessed to work for the previous three superintendents. This year was 1991, and many of our current Chandler Unified School District staff members are products of this generation. Those children were nurtured by ever-present parents. They remained optimistic and focused. They respect authority, but because they are also the 9-11 generation, they have had to learn to live and with the fact that the world is in as safe a place as we baby, baby boomers experienced growing up. And of course, they have grown up in the age of computers and digital literacy, well, which has changed the way we live, we work, we play. In 1983, the beginning of the millennium generation, I became the principal for a wonderful little country school named Weinberg Elementary. Weinberg's located on the corner of Val Vista and Appleby. It's just south of Queen Creek. The children from the one-room schoolhouse I mentioned, Chandler Heights, Trent were boundary to go to Weinberg, and they were so excited because they got rid of that long bus drive. Weinberg was so far out in the country that it was uncommon, not uncommon for staff members to be a little late to school because there was traffic of sorts. <laughs> and that's before all those roads. Oh, okay, that's enough. <laughs> At that time, Weinberg, they stopped me a few times, actually. At that time, Weinberg brought the total of elementary schools in the district to seven. We also had two junior highs and a high school. The teachers at Weinberg enjoyed their new building with the latest in school design. They had the best chalkboards and pull down maps money could buy. Despite being the most modern school in the district, Weinberg was not air conditioned. Well, in fact, no school in the district was air conditioned. Not until 1986, there was a bond election that air conditioned our schools. So in the days of August and September, when the swamp coolers were, well, they never really worked with 30 bodies in the classroom. They didn't work that great anyway, but uh, we would place fans around the room. And now in 2017, all our classrooms are climate controlled, but just as important, our buses are also air conditioned. Weren't the 80s great? I remember the days when we all used those amazing <laughs> Polaroid cameras. You know, remember you could print those right now photographs? Or those, you could use those Instamatics and take your photos and hope you had a few good ones when you went to the drugstore to get them out? 
As a result, there are thousands of fading photos in boxes around the country, blurry, heads cut off, and my very favorite one, you got your thumb in the picture. So, like our Generation Y children, today's youth will never know the joy of sitting in a library laboriously taking notes from an encyclopedia or tirelessly accessing the card catalog in order to find sources for a term paper. They will never know the trials of searching the phone book, the actual phone book, to find the Robert Smith they're looking for. Or if they want to drive to a new destination, they will never know the excitement of unfolding and refolding the AAA map. And yet again, years flew by and in 1996 I was blessed, very blessed, and named the superintendent for the district. At that time, the district had grown to 15,000 students and 17 schools. We had, were entering a period of unprecedented growth and labeled a hypergrowth district. At that time, children Chandler was named as the second fastest growing city in the nation, and during my tenure as superintendent, we have grown to nearly 45,000 students, three times the number than when I started. We have built 27 new schools and completed major renovations at all our long-standing schools when it comes to the roofing, flooring, technology upgrades, etc. And at this point, I'd like to stop and give due credit to our baby, my baby boomer colleague, who I know is doing budget right now, Mayor J. Tip Shereni, as well as the City of Chandler administration and city councils over the years. Their diligence and expertise in master planning the city, their wise decision making, and their fiduciary responsibility has given rise to a city of more than 250,000 residents with neighborhoods that are healthy for young families as well as retirees and with all the attributes that contribute to a beautiful place to live, work, and play. Their openness to creating mutually beneficial partnerships with the school district, starting with our Chandler Center for the Arts, and I see former Mayor Brooks here, started in 1989, paved the way for many partnerships, and our pools and libraries are all joint facility uses with the city. Continuing on our travel travels, our current babies and most of our current student population are part of the Z generation. And they're often referred to as the boomlets, born after 2001. Of these children, remember the one TV the family would watch and debate over who had to get up and change the channel? Well, 61% of the boomlets have televisions in their rooms with remote controls. Remember when viewing a movie in a theater was a treat? Now 35% of the boomlets have DVD players and watch movies at any time or they're watching them on their iPhone. And of course, remember when you needed to, a coin to operate a payphone? Well, four million of this generation will have their own cell phone. Can you imagine with me the children we are educating today have never known a world without computers or cell phones. And with the advent of computers, web-based learning, children have left behind toys at younger and younger ages. Consider that Mattel, Mattel's average age of a child in their market used to be 10 years old. Now it is three years old, three-year-olds that are drawn to the Mattel toys. And when you think about the toys, remember playing Red Rover and Mother May I and Foursquare? How about playing those old board games, Sorry, Monopoly, Tinker Toys? Now the craze is Angry Birds and Minecraft and whatever else they can find online. Snapchat, Instagram, Spotify, Twitter, Facebook. I guess they will have to go to Grandma and Grandpa's house to get a taste of the good old days with a game of Monopoly. When I started in Chandler schools, and even when I became the principal in 1983, we sure didn't feel we needed to worry about a gunman, a sniper, or a terrorist harming our children. A fire was our biggest threat that we prepared for with fire evacuation procedures 
and a child's injury was another concern, so we taught children don't run with scissors. But no one ever considered that a gunman might come on campus to harm children. It's fair to say that during my years as superintendent, we entered an era of concern for safety and security. Across the nation, actions have been taken to make schools more secure and limit access to our schools. No longer does a parent, a grandparent, or even the superintendent easily get on a campus to walk into a classroom. Here in Chandler, many of our schools were, were built in courtyard fashion to take advantage of our beautiful outdoor weather. We certainly didn't have snow days and things to worry about, so we wanted to enjoy the outside. Well, this open style became an issue in this generation, so gates have been added to these schools so intruders cannot access student areas, at least not very easily. Other schools built according to the architectural style of its time needed major modifications as well, and gates have been added. As I mentioned earlier, classrooms have been equipped with phones, and the major force behind it was security. We added to each one of our 2,500 classrooms a separate phone, and it has its own 911 identity so that emergency services could identify the exact location of the call of the emergency and don't have to check in the office to find out where, they, where they're needed. Peepholes were installed so our teachers can look outside and inside locking me ne mechanisms have been added. So in the event there's an intruder, a teacher doesn't have to step outside the door to lock it, she can lock it from the interior. Safety officers, we had to hire them for our elementary schools and we're blessed with having our school resource officers, our Chandler police officers on duty at junior highs and high schools. You'll find perimeter fencing around our schools so that strangers cannot have access to the playground areas. And what we're trying to do at most sites, it's a little harder at our big old high schools, um, is force a single point of entrance so we have some control. Closed circuit TV cameras on the buses and all schools have been installed. So when I think of Generation Z or those boomlets, it was a period when unprecedented change happened and it forced us to change the way we lived. And just like that, we're here in 2017 and we have discarded our pagers and our brick cell phones for the ever-present smartphone. We no longer need to make a trip to the nearest blockbuster to rent the latest movie. We're online, connected, constantly updated, and really, I think it's too much, but we are. We're all addicted to it, I'm sure. As I mentioned, we now have nearly 45,000 children and expect to grow another 800 to 1,000 next year. We have a total of 30 elementary schools, seven junior highs, and six high schools. So Chandler High lost their long-standing 76-year um, stint. We have specialty schools and have worked hard to become a district of choice. A few examples, Knox Gifted Academy, our Elite Performance Academy. We have Spanish and Chinese immersion programs, our Arizona College Preparatory. We have a number of Chandler traditional schools. We even have an accelerated middle school at Basha High. These are just a few of them. I don't want to keep you here much longer. Or I'd go on to the list. We have to fight hard to keep our place in the market. We have to fight hard, compete with charter schools that are popping up on almost every corner. There are 25 charters within our boundaries, each of them hoping to entice our students away. We are proud of the fact that we've been able to ma maintain our market share and have grown in spite of the competition. In fact, we've not had one year where we haven't grown at least four or 500 students as far back as I can remember. This year's projection, we actually were predicting a potential loss of 200 because of a few more charters coming in to a gain of 200 when in fact we grew 1,200 children. Thank you. What this says to us is 
We think we're on the right track to offering a quality experience, a safe environment, by developing these options and variety of choices and really, really dialoguing with our families to find out what it is that you want so that you don't leave us. And so we have created so many options uh, trying to keep them with us. I hope you'll indulge just a few more minutes my pride in what CUSD students and teachers and parents have accomplished. Our schools, there is a, an A plus in United States Blue Ribbon Award. We've won more than 80 times. In fact, we just learned six of our schools, the most of any in the state, are gonna be honored this year. Our, graduate, our graduates earn more than $100 million annually in scholarship offers. Our district has been rated an A, a grade A, by the Arizona Department of Education since the inception of the letter grade program. And Chandler Schools is the only district in the state that can say that all its high schools earned an A rating since the first year of inception. Our students and staff are routinely recognized to be the best among their peers in academics, the fine arts, and athletics. And we have won 86 team or individual athletic titles in the last five years, five years. From the high visibility Chandler, high visibility, I'm, I see blue and I say Chandler, high visibility football program championships to low profile like badminton and golf. Our success has equally been dependent on the vision and stability provided by our governing boards through the years. We have been in, so incredibly blessed to have citizens on our school boards whose first priority has always been to do what's best for kids. Our current board, Bob Rice, Annette Oxier, David Evans, Karen McGee, and Barb Mosden have 64 years combined experience as the Chandler Unified School District Board. Their forward thinking group established our 10 year strategic plan and they are so incredibly focused on the families and Chandler. And I think it's the reason, one of the major reasons um, why we've been success successful, they allow the administration and the teachers to do their jobs. Journey 2025 was the creation of this school board. It has the ultimate goal, and it's on the website, and there's lots of measurements and metrics, and um, their ultimate goal is to be the best district in the country. And they would tell you, and they tell me quite often, that our community, our children, and our staff deserve no less. If you don't want to be the best, then why are you working at it? We have a long way to go, but they are really focused on every effort, no matter what the area is, that we're here to serve and do the best job we can. And I believe we have over the years created a premier school district that I am, but I'm not the most objective person, so you probably need someone with a more balanced perspective, but I think it's pretty good. And as I gave credit to the city of Chandler, I also have to stop and think, as the mayor said, the support of our community has been extraordinary. It's no secret that funding is the greatest concern among schools across the state. Hands down, you ask any one of them. And our voters have stood behind us issue after issue. We wouldn't be where we are today if the community of Chandler and our families in our attendance areas haven't supported us every time we go to the polls and ask for their support. I'd like to think that we've given them a great return on their investment not only financially in terms of your house being a, um, making a better option to sell because you're in a quality school district, but, to, but to, you take pride in saying you live in the Chandler Unified School District. We'll never stop, stop striving to be the best. And though there are many changes throughout the years, there are some things that are never gonna change. The, the joy of seeing a child and his parents on the first day of kindergarten and we always have Kleenex ready. <laughs> the thrill of speaking to a group of brand new teachers on the first day in the district, and we hire about anywhere from 280 to 350 a year. The excitement, anticipation, and their anxiety is no different than I felt in 1971, but 
I don't know if some of you were in the Rotary. The Rotary used to take all the new teachers that were hired in Chandler. They took us to a breakfast or they had us for lunch. I don't think the Rotaries could afford to take 300 people to lunch, but maybe we'll pose that. And of course, the exhilaration of shaking the hands of more than 3,000 young men and women who we put out into the world each day who are our graduates. Now, it's been an honor to have been a member of Chandler School District for 46 years. And it's been a privilege, but more importantly, a pleasure to serve as a superintendent for the past 21. I hope you've enjoyed, maybe it jogged a few memories. If you jotted them down and want to share them or pass them over because we might integrate them into this presentation. But I thank you for your attendance and um, your great listeners and God bless you. Thank you.